I've had the base model M2 MacBook Air for about a week now, and this is my official proper review of Apple's long-awaited laptop. So I gave you my first impressions of this M2 MacBook Air last week, but I've now spent about a week with it, roughly, and as always, my thoughts have developed quite a bit. Just to confirm, I opted for the base model, and no, I haven't cleaned it in the last week, and that includes the eight gigabytes of unified memory, 256 gigabyte SSD, and that's the benefit of running a smaller YouTube channel like this one. I don't get review units from Apple, I have to buy this stuff myself, but that does mean I can spec it up to be whatever I want, or just opt for the base model. So the good news is that if you're considering this base model, and I know a lot of you are, I can give you first-hand experience of it rather than assumptions based on benchmarks and, let's be honest, people who have set their trousers on fire. Equally, if you're looking to spec up an M2 MacBook Air and you want to see what the base level starts from, then this video is for you. Before I get started, just a very quick word from today's sponsor, which is the wonderful 1Password. I could not live without 1Password. I made the switch from Apple Keychain to 1Password about a year ago now, and I've not looked back since. And if you didn't know, 1Password is, as you might guess, a password manager. So it stores all of your login credentials for apps, websites, etc. But it goes much, much further than that. You can put in your credit card details, your driving license, secure notes, basically anything you hold dear that you want to keep safe, stick it in 1Password. And the recent launch of 1Password 8 for the Mac has been pretty game-changing for me too, thanks to a awesome feature called Universal Autofill, which enables you to automatically fill in your login details for Mac apps and even macOS system prompts without trying to hunt down those password details. You just do a very quick keyboard shortcut and it does it for you. And it's features like that that stop me going back to Apple's keychain as much as I liked that in the first place. It doesn't really compare with 1Password. The best news is, thanks to the wonderful partnership I've developed with these guys, I can get you a discount. So if you click the link in my description, you can find out more about 1Password and grab yourself a pretty good deal at the same time. So we'll start with the design of this new MacBook Air. The iconic wedge design of the M1 MacBook Air and the, you know, the Intel version before that is no more. Although I suppose it is because you can still buy that one. But the new version, which is this one here, does not have a wedge. It's gone. It's now this kind of squashed MacBook Pro look, which I really, really like. But like I said last week during my first impressions, I'm a bit concerned about how thin it is. I'm sure Apple have thought of this. Of course they have. but I know of people who have bent their laptops in their backpacks. As lovely as this looks, I would advise getting a hard case personally, and I've opted for this, which is the Inatech, not sponsored. I just, I love Inatech stuff, it's fantastic. There's loads more on the market. And this is like a hard shell type thing, so you put the laptop in there, and it just gives it a bit more rigidity in your backpack. There's just one issue, and I have to mention it again. I won't mention it again, I promise. But will I? I probably will. Anyway, it's the smudges, and... I was going to clean this for this video, and actually, I haven't filmed the B-roll for this yet. I'm going to start filming some of the product shots of this after this, this filming, and I'm not going to clean it, actually. That is what this thing looks like when you start using it. So I would tread with caution if you're thinking about ordering the midnight colour. If I had my time again, I think I'd go with Starlight, personally. It's just, this one is just ruined, unfortunately, by those smudges. The other thing a few people have noticed on the midnight colour is that if you accidentally try and put the USB-C cable in and you know, don't get it in properly, you can chip away at the paintwork itself. I've got a very, very tiny mark on mine, but I've seen worse examples. I would give it a wide berth. Before I get onto performance, I think it is worth just quickly noting how I use this laptop, because I do think it's typical of most MacBook Air users. So for the last two years, I've used my trusty, beloved M1 MacBook Air as the driving force behind this business. And primarily that relates to writing daily for the blog, dealing with emails, creating sponsorship contracts, working with my external team, taking Zoom calls, working on spreadsheets, and doing some light or fairly light photo editing in Lightroom. It's what I'd call normal computer use really, bar the Lightroom stuff possibly, but I've never owned a computer that's as good at doing that stuff as the M1 MacBook Air. That role is now filled by this computer, and it's what it's been doing for me over the last week. So my thoughts on performance are based solely on that. 
In my opinion, this computer isn't made for intensive creative work. It can be used in a pinch for that, and it's amazing what it can do when you really put it to task. But its bread and butter is the ability to smash through normal computer stuff like I just mentioned. And it feels pretty much identical to the M1 MacBook Air. Although it feels a little bit quicker opening apps, which might be because this one is new, I'll report back on that, but side by side, they feel identical. I conducted a fairly useless Final Cut Pro export test in my first impressions video of this, which I'll link to above, but I won't be using this laptop for video editing unless I really, really have to. To reiterate, this laptop is built for everyday work, and I think it remains the best option on the market for that if your budget can stretch, and we'll get onto that later. Onto the screen, and I don't think there's a huge amount to say about this personally. It's lovely. You know, retina screens from Apple are fantastic. This one isn't any sharper than the M1 MacBook Air version. It's slightly bigger, obviously. It's 100 nits brighter, which you can notice, which is nice. But it's just a lovely, typical Apple retina screen. And it just feels made for 2022 without the kind of big bezels and all that sort of stuff. That's all we wanted, all we needed. No, it hasn't got ProMotion. You're not gonna get that on the MacBook Air at all. You'll have to get a MacBook Pro if you want that. And the notch, just very quickly, has no bearing on anything. I know people still have an issue with this thing. Honestly, you do not notice it's there when you start using it. I completely forgot it was actually present, to the point where I had to remind myself to mention it in this review. Quick note on battery life, it's still fantastic. It kind of matches the M1 MacBook Air in that respect. You can get through an entire day, no problem whatsoever. And the standby time remains epic. If you close this thing with, let's say, 80% remaining, go to bed, wake up the next day, it will still have 80% remaining. And yeah, it's just so convenient when it comes to that. MagSafe, I love the fact MagSafe is back. It just feels right. It's just a, a lovely return of something which is so convenient. This, one, this is one of those things that makes the M1 MacBook Air and the M2 MacBook Air now such a joy to use. It's so effortless when it comes to battery life. There is one big issue with the M2 MacBook Air, and that's the price. It's $200 more expensive than the M1 version, and that's only really worth it if you want the latest and greatest. As I mentioned earlier, if you put the M1 and the M2 together side by side and do normal stuff with them, they feel identical. The M2 MacBook Air feels a bit quicker, a bit snappier around the operating system, but performance-wise, when you start doing your normal stuff, they're pretty much the same laptop. So for $200, you're getting that better screen, the new chassis, MagSafe, and that kudos that comes with having the new one, which is enough for some people, I totally get that but it might not be enough for you. But that is why the M1 MacBook Air is still there. You can still go and get that today, and that's just a fantastic laptop. But I do think for a fairly large portion of the market at the moment, particularly with the you know, rising cost of living, it's gonna be seen as a bit too expensive. If you do wanna buy the M2 MacBook Air, but your budget will not stretch beyond the base model version, don't sweat it. It is a fantastic laptop and you will not regret it. Now, I will be returning with lots more thoughts on this laptop over the next few months, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell to avoid missing that stuff. But I'd love to hear from you. Have you got one of these? Have you got the midnight one? Have you gone for something else? What's it like for you? Let me know in the comments. And if you're still considering which M2 MacBook Air to buy for yourself, keep watching for a link to my full buying guide.